Right. Okay, we are recording. Okay, this is week two 3D tech sculpture course, Introduction to Rhino. Uh, we have about 15 or 17 students uh, present in our room, and I'm recording this session as a general introduction into Rhino. So this is the first session I'm teaching Rhino, but it will be followed by many others. Uh, students should look at online tutorials at home to uh, make themselves familiar. And I encourage them to just start working with it. And when they encounter a problem, go back to the online tutorials. This tutorial will be a general introduction into Rhino and uh, you know all the different parts to it so at the moment I have started with this so we're looking at uh, a screen where I uh, we have four fields we have on the left hand side the view from the top and then further down the view from the front to the right we have the view from the right and then we have a perspective view Again, when we work with Rhino, we should use, have a scroll mouse, a mouse with a scroll, uh, with a wheel. And when we move from field to field, this field is activated. So at the moment, you see the curves are going into the top view. And if I scroll the wheel, we zoom out. And if I scroll the wheel upwards, we can zoom in into an object. So. Scrolling that wheel, that middle wheel on your mouse, will enable you to kind of zoom in into certain areas. So it takes a little bit of practice, but I'm pretty sure I think if you're used to the Adobe suit, I think they use very, very similar, um, similar commands when you use a mouse. When you use the right click on the mouse, you can drag it and you drag the object wherever you want. Sometimes you need to quickly go and zoom somewhere in and then so the, the combination of wheel and right click is something you will become very familiar with because if you want to move to a precise location you need that combination of right click or wheel to kind of get to the spot where you want and um, the perspective view there again you click on the right the right side of the mouse so the right mouse button in order to move around your object and you see it from various sides. The same is true about the front view and the right view of this. Yeah. When we look at it, let's say we, if you're if you want to have it slightly different, if you're not quite happy with a, a wired view, we actually can change it under the view. So we have a pull down menu with the various options here. And in the view menu, we can actually change the way we look at an object. So at the moment we have the field perspective acti activated. So it means this area here is blue. The perfect, uh, perspective um, little sign here in the left hand corner is activated. That means at the moment we have activated this field. And if we change the view, we can change it, for example, to shade it. So it's shaded and you can sort of see it changes its appearance. It looks a little bit more like a real object. And Rhino has a whole number of different render settings and Rhino 6 has a greatly improved render setting. So with rendered settings, this is a rendered setting, but this is a setting that is preset and you can change these. So we come to this at a far, far later stage because you can give this object rendering. So you can turn it into a wooden block or a metal block and you can also obviously manipulate the light that hits it. For example, you could turn it into a mirror object. And if you have another cubi cubus next to it, it would reflect the cubus next to it. So you, for example, if this is a wooden block and we copy it and turn it into a mirror block, the mirror block would obviously reflect the wooden block next to it. Yeah. So under view, you can change this. The thing is, when you have your laptop, you will notice that this will slow you down. Rendering takes a lot of computing power. Yeah. So when you render an object, you need a very, very good computer. 3D environments and 3D programs, particularly when it comes to the rendering side of things, 
do take a lot of um, CPU power. So you need a lot of RAM and fast graphic cards in order to process all that data. Because we're not talking about a flat picture here. We're talking about an object that reacts to light. And that needs a lot of computing power. It's obviously quite simple with a simple cubus. But when we, for example, we scan an object, at the moment we only have six sides to calculate. When we, um, when we scan an object, you have triangu triangulations that make that object as a three-dimensional object. So every triangulation needs to be calculated how the light hits that surface and how it's reflected. So you need a lot of computing power. 3D programs demand a lot of computing power. So um, obviously the great thing is now in 2020, even a pretty standard laptop can perform these sort of things. So I expect you all to have a reasonable standard laptop and you should be able to, to perform these tasks with Rhino. So now, Let's change the perspective view again into a wireframe. And I quickly want you to show, I want to show you um, how to click um, onto, for example, if you, if you, if you only want to work on, this is a view from the top, you double click onto this blue top field. Yeah. So if you double click with your left mouse, the left cloud mouse button, allows you to flick in between the view of the four to an individual clue. You can also go, if I activate, for example, the perspective view and go to individual clue view here, yeah? And sometimes that's quite good if you, for example, wanna really concentrate on working on something in one view, it's great to have that option where you just go on the front view, let's say, yeah? One thing that is a little bit confusing in the beginning, let's say you want to make another stack of cube. Let's take and we make a three point view. And I want to make another cube on top of this. So let's say I'll only go half. And um, so this is the ground plate. So here I'm actually looking at it from the top. So where my curve is, this is the view from the top. I look down on it. Yeah. So I want this to be sort of an oblong. And then I move my cursor into the other field. And you can sort of see how it's being activated. Yeah? So I can say, oh no, I want this to go downwards. And then, or upwards, for example. Yeah? And I can also move in here, or into this one here. Yeah? And say, oh, I'm gonna go only to this midpoint. And these snapping tools show you where you where, where your current cursor is snapping to. The cursor, you can do that, we'll come to that later on. You can set snapping points or how snapping reacts. So that means where your cursor is snapping to in the given object. At the moment, my cursor is snapping to the midpoint of the other two or the end, the intersection there. Let's say I wanna to go to that midpoint and I just kind of left click onto it. So I have another cube here. I click my mouse, right mouse click and I can sort of move this around. Yeah. If I'm not happy with it, I can go and activate an individual object. And you see that you get these little lines. You get a green line and a red line. So the red line corresponds with the red line here. This red means X. So that's the direction X. It's this direction to the right y goes upward it is that direction and the z direction is a blue direction that goes into the z so in the upward in the horizontal uh, the, the vertical direction so up and down x and y and z yeah so the x and y direction is really important later on when you come to laser cutting because when you look at the laser cutter a laser cutter has exactly this direction. It's an X and Y axis. So your laser will, will operate in an X and Y direction. So in a red line and in a green line direction. Yeah. 
So these X and Ys and Zs, Z is the blue one, you need to start getting familiar with it. So X, Y, and Z direction is the way we operate our objects in a three-dimensional space. Yeah. Please stop and inter you know, if you have any questions, just say, hey, Eckhart, I, I didn't quite get that. Can you repeat that? Or is it too confusing? Or is it, if it's too much information also, we will need to stop. We will revisit these things every, uh, every week. But you need to obviously familiar, learn and familiarize yourself with these sort of things. So, uh, for, for, for some of you, this will be an old hack and really simple and, you know, uh, childlike. But um, I need to start with most of you from the start. So, when we activate an object, you see these arrows. And we can actually drag an object away in this direction. So, we only have to drag we can basically you hold that arrow and just pull it away in any direction you want. What we also see is this strange curve. What you can do, you can also grab this curve and move this object. At the moment, I'm moving this object in the top view. I undo it and I move it back. So, so I can also move this piece. This is now, I look at this from the front view. As you look, for example, into your screen, that's the frontal view, yeah? And I can do that again. Hold on, if I activate it, I can grab this and turn it manually. But you can also just click onto it and you can get, a, you can type in a number, a grade number, let's say 45. So 40, 45 degree angle, yeah? or a 90 degree angle. So if, you, if we click again on this one, let's say 90 degree, we flip it by 90 degrees and then you can move it up. So this is a quite a simple way to move objects around. Yeah. There are other ways to, to uh, move around object, but we come to this perhaps next week. I want to keep this fairly, fairly simple. So again, so, just to revisit, we have four windows, the top view, the front view, the right view, and the perspective view. We can draw. When we draw, we use this is the tool palette. And these are the first row here. Some of you might work with Microsoft, and Microsoft has a slightly different palette, but it's basically the same. Uh, the orientation might be a little bit different. And you can sort of basically pull these things as you like, you know. What I would recommend you, if you have a spare screen, use a spare screen and plug the spare screen in. I always use Rhino with a spare screen because I can actually put certain tools on, for example, if you have a laptop and you, you've got a, perhaps a 21 inch or a 420 or 24 inch screen somewhere at home, plug that in into your laptop and use the, the laptop to put your tools on, tool palettes and layer palettes and so on and so forth and then just use the main, the bigger screen for your design. That really helps get used to that. If you have space at all, try to do that. Because doing Rhino only on one screen can be a little bit cumbersome. Yeah, because you literally have not enough space. So when we come to the tool palette, we have a palette for lines. So these are, and now I just click onto the top view. Uh, let's delete this. At the moment, I'm looking down on this. So this is the top view. And I imagine you just want to make a laser cut drawing. Let's say you need, let's say you need to cut a, a circle. You need to cut a circle in a plate. And you need to do that. You have a whole number of line tools, yeah? So these are lines, polylines, for example. So, I mean, this is, you can make, the simplest one is a line. So you go from here to here. And then from here to here. So basically, what is a little bit confusing, when you activate the tool, you can go from here to here. 
this is a polyline now. This is the second option here, a polyline. And you need to finish that line with the right hand click of your mouse. Yeah. So if I select polyline, I can start making multiple lines in one direction, you know, in various directions. And I can create a shape. And you can close it. But if you want to keep it open, now if I start, which is a little bit irritating, you think, oh, I activated this tool and I want to continue drawing. It doesn't do it. You need to go revisit it or press your enter key or press your right mouse click. If you go right mouse click, you see all the things you did just in the past. You did a line or a polyline. So again, this is really important for those who are used to the Adobe uh, um, tool section. Once you kind of select the tool, whatever, spray or something, that tool is always active, uh, um, activated until you use the next tool. This doesn't work like this. You always need to go, for example, if I want to make a circle, it tells you whatever, whatever circle you want. You have various, various options. But let's say I want to make a circle. I want to make a circle here. Yeah. Okay. And now you thought, oh, I have activated this circle. Oh, it doesn't do it anymore. Click the right hand mouse button, and then you see all the last tools you have used. So you need to, so okay, I want to make another set of circle. You go here. I do another circle here, yeah? And let's say I want to do another line, another polyline. Let's say from here to here. Right click to finish it. So for example, a polyline, I, I repeat polyline. I just selected right hand mouse click and I can start the polyline. Let's say I wanna, I wanna end this polyline here. I need to right click the mouse button, yeah? Otherwise, if you, if you wanna close the polyline, right click, polyline. I start it here. And when you see that sort of white glow of the cursor, you can close it. It closes automatically. So this is something you need to get used to it. So you need to select the right tool. For example, let's select all and delete it. Okay, let's say you wanna make, you wanna cut a hole into a piece of wood. So let's select uh, um, a corner to corner. Okay, I select corner to corner. So I selected this and I want to cut the hole into it. I go and select a circle center radius. And let's say I'm going to cut the hole here. Right. Now, one thing, the first thing when I open Rhino is, and this is something that we, we, we need to come to a conclusion for here, um, is um, you, you've got all your tools. So you've got your line tools. You've got your surface tool. So these are surfaces. Don't mix the, these are just lines. Do not, this is just a line here. If the, you want to use this as a surface, you need to enter a surface tool. So this is a surface in three or four corners. So this is a surface. Whenever you have a surface, you have these lines. And you see the difference when you actually go into when you shade it. So this is actually a real surface and this is just lines. Yeah? The fundamental difference of this, this is a line and this is a surface. And these are obviously three dimensional objects. It's a box, cylinders, it's a box. But at the moment we don't know how high, we can type in the height, let's do 200. So when you look at our perspective and we shade it, hold on, we need to shoot here. We actually see what I, I hope you know what I mean. These is just, these are lines. There's no surface in here. 
This is a surface. We can actually cut things out of the surface. Here we can't edit, cut anything out because there's nothing, it's just lines. This is a surface and this is obviously a volume. When we, for example, use a laser cutter, we want a file like this because a laser will just follow these lines to cut something out of something else. Yeah, so like a circle. Um, we could convert this into lines. That's not a problem. And this is of the 3D, a three-dimensional object. We could send to a 3D printer. Now, I am um, a little bit aware. I'm not quite sure how much information because we need to perhaps start building up. Um, and I might actually have to change um, the assignment I have given you um, because I might overburden you with information. So let's stop it here. And I will give you following assignment for next week. You all need to open a window in Rhinoceros. I all want you to make something like this. You all need to produce a line, something, a line drawing out of three or four bits. You need to create a surface and you need to create a three dimensional object. And then go to a perspective view. What you can do is um, you can actually go, go to print and then you just, for example, you can save it as a PDF. For now, this is the easiest way to export a picture. Yeah. And you can basically set the parameters on, you, you set the window, what you actually want to export. So this is a PDF and you can sort of save it to your desktop. And I want you all to upload it onto the mirror board for next for the next um, class, yeah? So if you're not quite sure how to do it, but please again, just look at this recording. I will upload this recording today on Moodle, um, but I strongly advise you to on the mirror board, we have uh, tutorials, YouTube tutorials and Rhino tutorials. Uh, I strongly advise you try to follow some of those tutorials to kind of get to grips with Rhino because there's a lot, a lot to it. The general understanding that this is not a graphic design program, this is a 3D rendering program. We are literally producing 3D objects and we can, you know, we can produce objects, we can sort of stack up on top of each other but we equally can sort of cut through things and make them completely new. And we can give them surfaces. We can give them identities. This could be steel, this could be wood, you know. We could design an iPod case, but we want it to look like granite because we have these options to do that. We'll come to this later on, yeah. But um, I'm just gonna type this now as an assignment. So I changed this here because this is, I think, a little bit too ambitious. We might come to this next week. So, so, so Rhino exercise. Produce, produce, drawing that contains a line drawing, a surface, and a 3D object. Export it via the print option 
and upload it on Miro. So I obviously want you to experiment. So I hope you all do a little bit more complex things, you know. So if you go uh, to those Rhino tutorials and to the YouTube tutorials, we need to spend a bit of time with this program because it's um, when you come from an Adobe thinking, your thinking is flat. You think only in surface. You need to start thinking in 3D. It takes a little bit of a leap. Um, so that leap you need to do, uh, and you need to invest a bit of time in Rhino. The more you use it, the obviously easier it gets and the more fun it gets, you know, and the more you realize, wow, I can do this with this. Um, and you need, you need to know this program because you will produce your printing file on Rhino and you will export it and then you will send the data to the printer and you will produce one of the final works of this part of this uh, uh, skills course in Rhino. So you need to learn it. You need to invest a little bit of time in it. You know, and we're talking a few hours. Yeah. So next week, I want to have 17 PDFs on this page um, with yeah, a line drawing, a surface, and uh, an object shot from a perspective. Um, you can revisit this uh, recording, how to do that, but also the YouTube uh, tutorials out there. How do you ex export a view from Rhino? Uh, so again, you can use the, the printing option to go again. You go, for example, you click onto whatever perspective you want. Let's go to perspective. And let's say, let's do it a little bit nicer. We actually go, um, well, in view, let's render it. And we want to export it, go to print. Obviously this takes a little bit longer. You can set your window. Yeah, let's say you can also set, okay, I, I'd much rather have it in, in portrait mode and I want to set the window. And then you can basically set this window here. So this is actually quite a good tool if you design something and you want to show a client whatever a sculpture you have designed. So this is a very, very good way to, to export a 3D three-dimensional picture. And then, you know, basically you can save it as a PDF here, yeah? Onto your desktop and then upload it on Miro, yeah? So pretty straightforward. I cancel this now, obviously. And I go back to my four view. Okay, so you all, so at the moment, you should know all about how to navigate between the four Fields, top, front, right, and perspective view. You should all know how to set different appearances in different views. Let's go back to wireframe. Uh, we have a pull down menu. We come to this later on. But this will be your main selection of tools. This is where all the tools are you will be working with. And all these tools obviously have a lot of sub tools as well. Yeah. So, you know, we, you actually see. You know, I don't know how many initial tools we have, but every tool has a sub tool. So we are talking hundreds and hundreds of tools yeah, that do all different things. So, um, and that's not even here where we basically have a little command line. For those who work with uh, Rhino with, um, uh, uh, with the PC version, this command line is here on the top. You see it on the command line. Um, and we will work our next week, I will introduce you to the command line. The command line is really, so you, it's not really programming, but it's basically, it's little cues. For example, if I want to move this, you could move it like this, but also you can type in move. Yeah, and you can see all the different options again. Ah, uh, you just want to do the move, you 
click on to it. And now I can actually select a certain point where I move it. I want to move it exactly from here to this corner. It's far more difficult to do this with the arrows. You know, try to do this with the arrows. It's kind of difficult to do it really precisely. Obviously, the snaps now, that's good because the snapping is set here. Let me come to this here. These are the snappings. But the command tool is something we will use a lot because these are, let's say, this is a more precise way of designing specific parts. Yeah? Um, so we will come to that command, command uh, tool later on. Okay, um, I will stop the recording now. Hold on. Stop recording.